can you imagine a world without candies and treats? Although the world would be relatively healthier than the world we live in now, it would also be boring. What would we do at Halloween parties? Or what kinds of foods would we have at birthday parties or on cheat days? The candy business is one of the most influential branches of the food industry. And although candy exists in a very wide variety, there are a few unique ones that we just can't get enough of. For example, gummy bears. Everyone loves these chewy, delicious candies, but have you ever stopped to wonder how they are made? Well, we go behind the scenes to see how gummy bears are made, emphasizing the special techniques used by the top candy manufacturers in the world. Unlike many candies which have been around for a while, gummy bears are a more recent development in the candy industry, and ever since they hit the market, they have been a popular favorite. Gummy bears aren't loved just because of how sweet they are, but also because they are fun candies. They exist in thousands of shapes and sizes, making them one of the most versatile confectionaries ever produced. The first gummy bear was made in Germany in the early 1900s, but who would have thought that a small science experiment involving gum-like substances and sweeteners would give rise to a multi-billion dollar sweet business? The invention of the world's first gummy bear is all thanks to Hans Riegel, the founder of the Haribo Candy Company, the largest gummy bear manufacturer worldwide. During this time, Arabic gum was used to manufacture these rubbery candies, and that was the secret to their chewy nature. But with the advent of technology and the search for healthier alternatives, gelatin was discovered as a substitute. Since then, thousands of other candy companies have followed the train, and healthier gummy bears are being made worldwide. Apart from gelatin, other basic ingredients used to produce gummy bears include corn syrup, sugar, water, food coloring, and flavorings which are all harvested from different sources, whether naturally from plants or animals, or in a lab by mixing chemicals together. All of these ingredients come together in different quantities to produce gummy bears. However, gelatin has perhaps the highest effect on the candy. It affects the texture, shelf life, appearance, and even how fast it dissolves in the mouth. Gelatin is extracted from a very important protein called collagen found in tough areas of the body like bones, skin, hair, etc. Collagen can also be found in the bones of livestock, so instead of getting rid of these parts, the bones are sent to the factory where all their collagen content is extracted. First, the animal tissue is placed in water, and once heated for a while, the thick and sticky collagen begins to form in the container, thus forming gelatin. Gelatin is odorless, tasteless, and has no fat content. So all it contributes to the gummy bear is its sticky characteristic and high protein content. When the right amount of gelatin is used, the gummy bears have the thick and tough characteristic they are known to have. But you might be wondering, why does something so thick easily melt when I put it in my mouth? This is because gelatin is a thermal reversible gel that melts when heat is applied to it. Therefore, the heat in your mouth causes it to melt which is why gummy bears are stored in a fridge or a room with a cool temperature. Corn syrup is also used in the manufacturing process of gummy bears to increase the bulkiness of the candy, while the other ingredients, sugar, flavorings, and colorings have self-explanatory functions. After all the ingredients have been prepared, the first step of the production process can now begin. The first step is called compounding, which involves mixing all the ingredients in huge mixing tanks. Factory workers called compounders oversee this step, and part of their job is to pour in the right amount of ingredients into the mixer exactly how it is listed in the recipe. These huge mixing tanks have different functions, apart from mixing the raw materials for example, heating and cooling, which are also very important steps in the compounding process. Depending on the quantity of each batch, this process could take anywhere from 1 to 3 hours. Once compounding is over, the mixture is sent to the quality control laboratory where qualified technicians check to see if it meets the company's standard in terms of texture, appearance, and other physical characteristics. The batches that pass this quality check are sent to the next production stage, while those lacking in one area or the other are either fixed up or discarded. Next, the mixture is pumped through a pipe to a machine called the depositor, which portions specific amounts of the compounded mixture through a nozzle onto molding trays located on conveyors down below. These trays have tiny holes with different shapes, and the candy mixture poured into each one takes the shape of that hole. The trays come directly from a machine called the mogul, 
which sprinkles starch in each hole to prevent the candies from sticking to the tray and allow for easy removal of the candies from each hole. Depending on the size of the factory, up to 30 depositors can be in the deposition area, and each one of them may deposit different flavors of gummy bear mixtures all at once. This allows for different candy variants to be produced at a time, thus speeding up the entire production process. These trays leave the deposition area on a conveyor, which transports them to a cooling room where the candy mixtures stay for about 24 hours. At the end of this cooling period, the gummy bears are formed, and the trays are carried back to the mogul machine, but this time, they are taken to a section of the machine called the starch buck, where they are emptied. This is done by inverting each individual tray, which causes all the newly formed gummy bears to fall out onto a vibrating screen called the sieve. The vibration of this sieve allows the excess starch present on the body of each candy to fall off. The starch falls onto a tray placed beneath the sieve, and it is cleaned and taken back to the mogul, where it is used all over again in the candy-making process. Meanwhile, the gummy bears removed from the sieve are taken to another machine, decorating them in preparation for the packaging step. The interaction between the molding trays and the mogul machine is continuous, sort of like a never-ending loop. The candies that are ready to exit this loop after 24 hours are sent over to the packaging area, but before they are packaged, they are displayed on a conveyor which passes through an inspection section paroled by another set of skilled technicians. These groups of workers look out for candies that are still covered in starch or those that are oddly shaped and discard them. This way, only the candies in good condition are allowed to pass on to the packaging area. Hey, can you package up all those bad ones? I'll take them. There, a specific quantity of gummy candies is weighed before being put into branded bags and these filled bags are transported to another area of the packaging machine, where the air content is reduced before it's sealed. Next, the packaged bags are sent to the boxing area, where they are arranged in big boxes, which are either stored in the warehouse or transported to retail stores across the world. Thanks to their shelf life of about two years, gummy bears can stay on supermarket shelves for a while and still be in good condition, but because of how sweet they are, they rarely stay that long without being bought. In the US alone, about $200 million is made from the sales of gummy bears each year, with the highest sales being made around Halloween and Christmas seasons. These delightful candies exist in different flavor variants, but the most popular ones are raspberry, orange, strawberry, pineapple, and lemon flavors. What's your favorite variant of gummy bears? Leave your answer in the comment section below, 